All of us are affected by traffic every single day. Wouldn't it be great if we were on the road to changing this? Today on Ask Terra Caribbean, we meet with Catherine Agong, a transportation planner and engineer. So Catherine, welcome. It's lovely to have you here with us at Terra Caribbean. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. You know, traffic is something we struggle with on these islands and, and always have. So I'm really excited about today's conversation where we'll get into, you know, transport management and engineering and how we can plan better going forward. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you got into this field and, and about transport oriented development. Yeah, I first got into transport planning and transportation engineering. I was first exposed to it when I was doing my undergraduate degree in geography. Um, after a few years, I thought, you know, I need to really get skilled in the subject area. So I went on to do a master's degree in transport planning and engineering. Um, just to, to, to upskill, I was doing traffic signal design and maintenance at the time. And I really, really loved the idea of solving traffic and transport problems. So yeah, that's, that's my history there. Yeah, which we have lots of traffic and transport problems here, right? And, yeah. And you know, bringing it back to real estate, as, as we were discussing earlier, we have issues with the price of real estate and there are a few things that keep the price high, right? One being uh, access. So if there were easier access routes in and out of Port of Spain, it opens up um, the community to additional properties outside, right? So when the traffic is tough, then they can only live in certain areas, driving up the price in those areas. So that's kind of where it ties in with real estate and where we could, you know, working together, it benefits everybody on the island. Well, ideally, we'd want to have real estate, whether it's for residential or commercial or, um, you know, education or offices. We'd want to have them located in areas that are easily accessible by sustainable transport and active travel, which means using the bus or some other mass transit or walking and eventually cycling if it's safe to do so. So that is the premise of transit oriented development. It means having an intensity of real estate development close to transit links and giving people real options for moving from point A to point B. Fantastic. As many options as possible, right? Not yes. just driving from door to doors as we tend to do here in Trinidad. Correct. You know, I, I was lucky enough to travel to London recently to see how their public transport system works. And it's amazing how efficient it is. And it, it really keeps the, the economy alive in the city and in the, and in the country. Because as we've seen in Trinidad, when, when there's an issue on the Beatham and it shuts down transport in and out of Port of Spain, it severely affects business on the whole, right? So we need to offer as many options as possible for people to get in and get around, and not rely on one or two roads. That's right. And, and, and what, what goes into to that is a lot of collaborative working between the real estate businesses such as yours, the property owners, the landowners, the government, professional built environment professionals like myself to come together and to put forward developments that give people a real option of, of choosing which form of transport they would want to, to take. And you know, there's lots of problems right now with the climate change and we know that transport is a huge co contributor to, to climate change. And so we'd want to focus on mass transit in our case, it would be via the bus, you know, intensifying the use of the priority bus route and to make cities and towns more walkable, which means making it more attractive, making the pavements wider, removing trip hazards, you know, making sure that there is accessibility for all ages and all abilities so that you can choose to walk from point A to point B. You can take the bus if you want to take a bus. And, 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 and therefore, helping people's health, you know, real estate will then be contributed to helping people's health, helping with social inclusion and, and, and you know, access generally. Fantastic, right. So there, there's so much more to it than, than just the roads. But would you say that what the government has been doing in, on the Churchill Roosevelt by creating additional flyovers and doing away with the traffic lights, is that a good example of traffic oriented development? 
not ideally. I mean, there's benefits to those developments in that they help with generating economic wealth through exports and imports. You need those corridors to move goods in particular. Um, but transit-oriented development is to look at um, our you know, networks, our road networks, particularly our wonderful priority bus route and other public transport corridors that could be developed in the country and intensifying the land use around those public transport corridors. In addition, like I said before, we really want to focus on something called active travel. Active travel means more, more than likely to use walking in our context and then eventually in the longer term, to implement infrastructure and training and information sharing so that things like cycling could become more of a norm for commuting rather than just a leisure activity because they do lots of cycling here in Trinidad and Tobago, but um, that's more of a leisure. We want to be able to transport that skill into your day-to-day -day movement. Right, fantastic. So that means uh utilizing the land alongside the bus route etc to to make it easier for people to move about yes. right and access the bus route or or move about on bicycles etc yeah as well as as incorporating into design and future design of say malls or big residential developments incorporating into that access and egress for the pedestrians for the cyclists for the buses, the maxis, etc. Like I said before, any age group from little babies to the elderly, um, the senior citizens, um, they could move about more easily. And, and for us in Trinidad and Tobago, it's not something that is going to be difficult to, in, in, to, to achieve. It's a case of, like I said before, the right people coming together and the right entities coming together with a single vision. Um, linked to goals for you know sustainable development and economic growth, and and to find to be a bit creative to find brownfield sites and greenfield sites and willing property owners and developers who are um, willing to intensify the use of these sites to you know build lovely condos and to be lovely to you know be living in a condo and um, have the access to a bus or walking more likely to get to school, to get to work. And then even if you live in uh, or work in Port of Spain and you need to travel to the east, you can use the bus for those longer um, distant journeys. Yes. Yeah, it also sounds like a bit of a mindset change to me for Trinidadians because we need to embrace public transport and other forms of transport because from what I see, certain people are, uh, are really stuck to their vehicle and they, they just want to drive from door to door. They wouldn't consider public transport. Whereas other parts of the world, you wouldn't consider your car. You must consider public transport. Yes. And it is it is efficient as it is currently and, and we should work towards making it more efficient. Yes. Efficiency, comfort, um, convenience are all things that we as transport planners and transportation engineers are trained to weave into provisions for movements, whether it be by walking, cycling, or taking a bus. Um, and part of that as well, part of encouraging people to use those modes of transport is the information to, you know, increase their knowledge and awareness of how to, to use, because to use those public transport options or to use increase their knowledge and awareness to use those other forms of transport apart from driving the driving gives us a comfort and security that you know we all need and it is on it's important for us as built environment professionals to transport for want of a better word that comfort and convenience that we get from the car to walk in cycling and to use the bus as much as possible. Very good, yes, absolutely. And, and to encourage people to, to utilize all of these different means of, of, of transport, make them comfortable with it. No reason why we can't do that here in Trinidad yes. and Tobago. Yes. So allow me to thank you again, Catherine, for joining us. It was fantastic having you and great hearing about everything that you're doing. Thanks, JP. I really enjoyed our conversation.